Hello, V. Anton Sprawl here again. Normally, this is where I say I'm here to talk about how you can learn to think like a programmer, but this video can be enjoyed even by non programmers. I'm going to be making some new videos about algorithms, and I thought I would start with the very basics. So, this video is for anyone who wants to know what an algorithm is and why anyone should care, and won't include any programming code. To get started, I need you to think about a simple problem. I've laid out a series of playing cards, all of the same suit. Let's say I need these cards to be in order from lowest to highest. I want you to stop this video and find some playing cards or anything else that you can put in a definite order. Get a few of the items, mix them up, then put them in order. And then come back to the video. Did you do it? Okay. Now I want you to think about how you put the items in order. You see, most people, when asked to put items like cards in order, will use one of two common methods. One way to order the cards is to find the lowest card and move it to the left end, and then find the lowest card out of the rest and move it to the second to the left position, and then find the lowest card out of the rest and move it to the third position, and so on. Now, is that what you did? Now, the other common method is to pick up the cards one by one in the order that they are lying on the table and stick each card in its correct position among the picked up cards, sliding other cards out of the way to make room as needed. Maybe that's what you did. Again, most people will use one of these two methods. Now, if you did something entirely different, feel free to drop a comment about it below. Now, in computing, putting things in a defined order is called sorting. The two methods I just described are two different algorithms for sorting. You see, that's all an algorithm is. It's a particular method for solving a particular problem. The first method I described is called the selection sort algorithm because at each step, we're selecting the item that has the lowest valued label. The second method I described is the insertion sort algorithm. At each step, we're inserting an item in its proper place in relation to the items we inserted before. So again, that's all an algorithm is. It's a particular method of solving a particular problem. There are algorithms for all kinds of things in programming. You need to sort things? Well, there's an algorithm for that. You need to find a particular item in a sorted collection of data? There's an algorithm for that. You need to find the cheapest way to fly from one city to another? Well, there's an algorithm for that too. Whether the problem is in data processing or graphics or networking, you name it, if it's a common problem, there are algorithms to solve it. And sorting is definitely a common problem. Sometimes you know when a program is sorting because that's what you're asking it to do like when you click on a column heading. But sorting happens behind the scenes all the time as well. It's much easier for a program to search through data that's been sorted, for example. In programming, we often talk about algorithms rather than programs because an algorithm is a generic description of a solution to a problem. We can use a sorting algorithm that sorts cards to sort other things like files in a cabinet, books on a shelf, data in a program, it's all the same. And talking about algorithms allows us to discuss the properties of the solutions without getting bogged down in the particulars of a particular programming language or programmer style. Now, you might be thinking, we've got two different sorting algorithms here. Is one better than the other? Well, in general, no, these two algorithms are both about the same. Now, when we evaluate an algorithm, we try to measure how many steps it has to take to get its work done. In the case of sorting algorithms, for example, we might ask ourselves how often the algorithm has to look at two cards and determine which card is lower. Now, I mean, think about inserting one card in the insertion sort algorithm. We may not think about it just like this, but basically, We've got to start on the right end of our previously sorted cards and compare each card to the card we're going to insert next. 
until we find a card in our hand that is lower than that new card. And then we just insert to the right of that spot. Now, on average, we're going to have to go through half of the already sorted cards before we find the right place to insert the new card. Which means the more cards we've already inserted, the more time it takes to insert each card. This also means that insertion and sort gets slower and slower as the number of things we're sorting increases. For example, if we sort five items, we're going to make seven comparisons on average total. But if we sort 10 items, we'll make 27. So sorting twice the number of items takes four times as much work. And selection sort works out about the same. The more cards we start with, the longer it takes to select the next card. So if we double the number of items, we also double the amount of time it takes to select each item. So the overall work is again about four times as much. So both insertion sort and selection sort are considered slow. But that doesn't mean we might not prefer one over the other in certain situations. Suppose the items you're putting in order are like really heavy crates. With selection sort, you'd only have to move each crate one time. But if you used insertion sort, you'd always be sliding the heavy crates down to make room for new ones. So when the item is tough work just to move, selection sort can be a better choice. But now suppose you're sorting thousands of folders that are being brought in a few piles at a time from different places. Well, with insertion sort, you could go ahead and get started with the first folders that arrive and then insert the others when they show up. With selection sort, you can't select the first folder until you have all of them to look through. So neither sort is especially fast, but in some circumstances, one might be preferred over the other. But if these sorting algorithms aren't that great, well, what do the great sorting algorithms look like? How do they work? Well, that's a question I'll be answering in a future video. Now that's it for this video. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And feel free to suggest topics for future videos. Thanks for watching.